Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Today we are going to have a look in on my African nightcrawlers that live in the Vermibag Lil Mammoth. Today what we're going to do is we are going to check in on these guys, see how they're doing for moisture and for food, and if we're lucky, we might get a worm ball. I've had pretty good luck with them not sticking to that lid, at least not coming up on the, the top side like I was afraid of. Um, if you guys have African night crawlers, uh, put in the comments below how do you raise yours. I have really only had luck in uh, continuous flow through systems, uh, such as the urban worm bag or the uh, vermi bag. And one of the primary reasons is because these guys like to escape and every time that I had them in a system that was not a zipper bag they would take off on me. When I first got the worms I had them in about a 40 gallon tote and it was open. At first I put lid on it and then they tried to crawl the walls and so I took the lid off and even so on the first thunderstorm when after I got them, I found about 20 pencil size uh, dead worms or worm jerky uh, on my living room floor. And so that was pretty much, I was like, they can't be crawling around in the living room. They're going to have to go to the basement. So I took their tote and I put them in the basement. And unfortunately, the temperature was um, too low. Now, according to some of the research that I have done, the minimum temperature that these guys can, you know, survive in is like 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I think that's about 13 degrees uh, Celsius. And so I lost about half of my population when they were living in the basement. Once I discovered what was happening, I got an urban worm bag and put them in there. And they were in there for a year or so. Um, eventually the zipper broke and it had, it had been abused, you know. I wasn't going to complain to the company because I did overfill it and et cetera. So I didn't really feel like it was the company's fault. I didn't want a free urban worm bag or anything. Um, so I put them back in totes. And, uh, and of course, they did exactly what I should have known they would do. And they started running amok again, even with the lights on. So then I was, uh, Tom from Burmy Bag started making these um, little mammoths, which they're big, but they're not as deep. And so that actually helps me with the harvesting. Um, I'm not sponsored by Vermi Bag or anything, but I have really liked this better than the Urban Worm Bag simply because I don't have to go crawl on the floor upside down to, to harvest this. Now, one of the things that people might be saying is, geez, these are really small African night crawlers. Uh, yeah, they are. Uh, when I first got them, they were the size of pencils. And I probably started with, uh, I think I bought four pounds, but they actually probably gave me more like five pounds. Um, and then over time, you know, the population grows and they just got smaller and smaller, which, again, according to my research, is totally normal. Um, they regulate their own population and... In doing so, they have become smaller, and you know I don't you know I don't care how big they are. I mean, yeah, it was really cool to have really big worms, but um, I'm fine with them this way. They still do an amazing job uh, processing, especially my Amazon boxes. I couldn't do it without them. These guys probably go through a 20 or 30 gallon tote of bedding, shredded paper and cardboard every month. There's no way I could manage that without them. So let's dig around here and see what we've got. Now if you go back and look at the playlist, this these sticks here were actually branches off of one of my bonsais. They were full-size juniper branches. It's probably been about a year, um, but I think they're really good for a microbial and fungal sink in the bin as new materials put in I think it's a good way to keep keep standard you know all of the the good bacteria and fungus in the bin and keeps it on all levels so dig in here a little bit more I'm seeing a good concentration of worms there we go not a proper worm ball but pretty good for 
for African Nightcrawlers. They have definitely got into the uh, avocado there. No sprout from that. Um, there you go. There's the uh, outside of a kiwi. It takes forever for some reason. Seems really soft, but they will go through, you know, like an orange peel or a banana peel faster than they're going through those kiwi peels for some reason. There we go. That mango's peel is just about done. I'm not really seeing any food here. I'm going to keep digging a little bit. Oddly enough, that algae or moss or whatever it is that was from the fish tank the other time, it is still hanging in there <laughs> in the dark under the castings. Okay, so the moisture feels okay, but around the edges it feels dry. I, I have been coming in here to check because of course it is winter. Uh, it's five degrees or four degrees Fahrenheit here right now. Uh, inside, you know, in, in my house here in the room with the plants and the worms, I keep it about 70 degrees. So they're fine up here, whereas now that it's getting a lot colder in the basement, they would not be okay in the basement. And even though I may not have gotten into these worms if I had known how high maintenance they were, I have them now and I intend to take as good a care of them as I can. You can see the edges are really dry here, so I'm going to incorporate everything and then we will add moisture a little bit later. So yeah, I'm not seeing any food, which, you know, after a month, um, not surprising, not surprising at all. So we'll, we'll put our bigger stuff back over, you know, to one side and the bedding that was on the top that had kind of dried out, we'll put that down and then we'll put our new feeding on top of that. And that will give it, you know, a good chance to uh, incorporate its moisture. As you can tell, it's getting kind of full again, so next video might need to be a harvest. Um, if you have an urban worm bag or a vermi bag, how often do you har harvest? Put that in the, the comments below. Okay, so they are going to get a stock pot of melon. CC still has all the melon in her garden, so I just keep going and taking all of the frozen pumpkins from, from her house. And the worms do not seem to be upset about it at all. This is mostly thawed, um, but I think that should do all right. And then we also have some contributions from my son, who also has a green thumb. Uh, his fish tank plants have to be cut down like every week. They are so vigorous. So that's okay. The worms will eat that too. Let me get them some bedding. Okay. One more. All right, so let's give them a little bit of water around the edges here. And then the next video will be a harvest. I think obviously it is super dry around the edges. So we'll come back in about two weeks, give or take. Let all of this, you know, work its way down. And that's about three quarters of a gallon. That will give everything a chance to moisten up finish up in the bottom and then we can harvest the next time we come in. If you like this uh, bin or looking at the African Nightcrawlers, they have their own playlist and I can link that below. If you want to go look what I did last time, I'll link that above. Uh, if you liked this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.